I'm Rachel. Sasha here. Welcome to 2021. We did it. We made it through that dumpster fire of a year. 2020 may have been the suckiest year that ever sucked. Mm -hmm. But we don't like to dwell on the negatives. So this video is all about positive things that happened in 2020. Yeah, we're going to share with you 20 things about 2020 that didn't suck at least from our perspective. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna start from the top of the year because it actually got off to a great start with one of our favorite bands in one of our favorite cities. Rachel's a little cold, aren't you? Uh -huh. Not used to this. <laughs> you ready to go back to your beach? Uh -huh. We kicked off 2020 by seeing the Disco Biscuits in Chicago. Yeah, we like to party. Sorry if you don't. It was a great three nights with uh, friends and one of our favorite bands. And wow, 2020 was looking up there. And 2020 was going to be a huge year. It actually like continued going pretty well at the beginning. Um, the next thing that didn't suck was that we went to Merida, Mexico, finally, which we had heard so much about. Yes, we'd been hearing stuff about Merida for years, and we were finally able to go check it off. And one of the coolest things about that was meeting fellow digital nomad friends. We had been friends on the internet but we finally got to become friends IRL, IRL. in real life. Nice. Pinch day travel bloggers. Cheers. Cheers. Feliz cumpleaños, chica. Hey, there's books there. You want a book? Hey. Hey. And from Merida, we went to Isla Holbosch for a much needed vacation. It's a little island that's just a couple of hours north of Cancun, but you do have to take a boat. Yep, um, just spent a couple days there, mostly bouncing from hammock to hammock and hanging out by the pool and eating delicious seafood. Mm -hmm. We have another video about that if you want more details. Be sure to check that out. Next up was Carnival in Barranquilla, Colombia. We really enjoy um, hitting up different carnival celebrations around the world. We've been to Mazatlan and Brazil and now Barranquilla. Yeah, and I think, honestly, Barranquilla might have been the most fun of the three. Uh, it helped that we had a local friend there and some other fellow Digital Nomad friends joining us. It's always better with friends, right? Yes, our friends from the World Wanderers podcast joined us for the celebrations. And as Sasha said, anything is better with friends. Hey! Hey! Gonna cost you. From Barranquilla, we went to um, Santa Marta for a couple days and then Playa Costeño to celebrate my birthday. I'll do a little cheers. Cheers to the birthday, lady. Cheers to the birthday. Yeah. yeah, it was really nice just chilling out after the madness of Carnival. And that was really the last fun thing we did before everything started to lock down. And we ended up experiencing life during quarantine time as I'm sure most of you did as well. But you know, one good thing about quarantine time were all the corn streams we got to experience. Yes, another thing on our list were all of the um, awesome corn streams that we got to watch over the summer. It, of course, doesn't replace live music, but it was a nice substitute. Yeah, I mean, live from out there, Goose Bingo Tour, Fish Dinner and a Movie, uh, all these uh, shows that we were able to experience from our living room really kind of save the day there yeah yes it gave us something to look forward to on the weekends yeah and we're looking forward to the return of live music as soon as possible another thing that didn't suck about 2020 was picking up old hobbies again um for me specifically that was playing the guitar i haven't had a guitar in years but i bought one in 2020 just a small little guy but it was great to uh, strum some tunes again uh, we also played a lot of disc golf and when we were in Asheville, where we spent about three months, um, I played a ton of disc golf, probably more than I had since college. Yes, we played a lot of disc golf, and we also did a lot of hiking. As being outdoors was considered one of the safest things to do over the summer, we got back into hiking, and it was really nice. Speaking of Asheville, we had tons of time to do more exploring in the area. Previous years, when we would go to Asheville, our time was jam-packed with going downtown, mm -hmm. seeing live music, going to breweries, but none of that was possible. So we explored the nature that surrounds Asheville. Yeah, we found some new cool spots like Lake Powhatan. It's a small lake in the mountains. There's even a little beach there. That was super awesome. Uh, we got out on the Blue Ridge Parkway and did a lot of different hikes and viewpoints there. We saw the most epic double rainbow. The most <laughs> epic double rainbow. In fact, 
we drove on the Blue Ridge Parkway from Boone all the way down to Asheville, which is about 70 miles. And we yeah. were treated to some pretty spectacular scenery. Absolutely. Really loved that part of last year. Since we didn't get to do our usual, uh, you know, running around seeing shows last summer, we ended up spending a lot of time with family and friends, which was quite nice. Yeah, we probably spent the most time with family uh, last year than we had in the previous three or four years. Right, and it wasn't like rushed, busy, holiday gathering type stuff. It was, you know, casual, you know, relaxed time at home. Uh, and also got to catch up with a lot of old friends. So we really appreciated that part of the slowdown that 2020 forced on us. Yes, it was really nice to nurture relationships and actually properly catch up with people. Towards the middle of the summer, we were getting ready to go a bit further afield from Asheville and join some friends for a camping trip in South Carolina over 4th of July weekend. That was actually my first time in the Palmetto State. Um, it was a quick trip, but it was great. Uh, we played in the river, we cooked up some delicious food, uh, we blasted some Wadsford Panic and had a campfire. Mm -hmm. That was a really good way to celebrate the 4th of July. And then a few weeks later, we had our fifth wedding anniversary. Uh, which was supposed to be spent seeing fish at the gorge. Wah. But since that couldn't happen, we decided to plan something equally epic and went to um, check out the Smoky Mountains for a week. Yep, we spent a couple nights in a wood cabin, and then a few more nights in an RV, uh, which was one of uh, our first glamping experiences, which we ended up having many. and just spent the whole week hiking, hanging out in nature, really exploring the Great Smoky Mountains. And it motivated us to possibly try our hand at hashtag man life, so stay tuned for Maybe that. Maybe this year, we'll Maybe. see. So that was fun, huh? That was fun. Soaking wet now. Straight up caught in a downpour. Yep. In the National Park. It is pouring freaking rain outside. We made it back to the trailer though. We made it. Speaking of glamping, uh, one of Sasha's brothers came down to visit us in Asheville, and so we hitched a ride with him back up to Sasha's hometown of Detroit to visit his family. But with it being such a long drive from Asheville to Detroit, we looked for ways to break up the drive, and Sasha found this really awesome glamping spot in Berea, Kentucky. I yep. think I said that right. I think you got it. It's called Homegrown Hideaways. It's a big working farm, but they also have tree houses, yurts, a teepee, an airstream, all this cool stuff on their property where you can camp out and very easily maintain social distance and enjoy the great outdoors. Look at just a beautiful night sky full of stars. So that was definitely something that didn't suck. There's also some really awesome hiking in that area. And we even stopped at the Cumberland Gap on mm -hmm. the way and got to see some pretty awesome views there. Yep, that was a lot of fun. From there, we did make it up to hashtag pure Michigan, uh, where I'm from, even rocking my Detroit shirt for this video. And we definitely had a pure Michigan trip, right? Yes, we spent time on Lake Huron. We even went to the other side of, of the state and said hello to Lake Michigan. Uh, great we, lakes, great times, people. We made a stop in East Lansing so Sasha could say hello to his alma mater. Go green. Go white. There it is. Uh, yeah, my mom got a cottage uh, in Lexington. It's near Lake Huron, so we stayed there a couple times, uh, swam in the lake, also went on a camping trip with friends. We went rafting, we climbed up the sand dunes. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we ate some Coney Island and drank some Bells, and yeah, overall had a great uh, short and sweet trip visiting my people in Michigan. Mm -hmm. It looked like we were gonna go the whole summer without any proper live music, but thankfully, Humphreys McGee saved the day. So, we got to go see a drive-in concert which on the one hand, we were interested to see what it was like since it was all the rage. Um, but on the other hand, I will admit, it was a bit strange. It was definitely different, but it was awesome to see one of uh, our favorite bands put on a two set rock show from the safety and uh, comfort of our little box around the car. Um, better than nothing, right? Exactly, we got to scratch that live music itch. So uh, this is a crazy story. I'm gonna try and keep it short because it could easily go very long, but my first year in China, I brought a bunch of Chinese yuan back to the U.S. Bad idea. Dumb move. Um, I had to find a way to trade it into dollars. I did. I should have set up a bank account. I didn't like the agreement at the bank, so I just kind of had a shoebox full of cash. We went off on fish tour, and well, you know what happens on fish tour. Lots of partying. It's easy to forget things. I guess I forgot where I put that cash because I couldn't find it. And for years, I just thought I lost it. I thought 
maybe it vanished into the black hole that Someone is my stole house. It. Anyway, I had just moved on, you know, for a decade. And this summer I was in Rachel's mom's attic cleaning out my stuff and pulled out this leather binder where I keep my college degree, my transcripts. Important documents. Yeah, but I was really trying to see what was in there because there was maps of the summer palace and pictures. I pulled out a fat wad of $100 bills that my past self hid from my future self. Yes, but the funny thing is that this binder has been with us for the past decade. It lived with us in Pretty Beijing, much, yeah. in Kunming. It even came to Bali with us, and I sent it back to the States with my parents. I mean, <laughs> I should have bought some Bitcoin with that money, but you know, I found it, and what I did do with it was buy a brand spanking shiny new MacBook Pro. Uh, super excited about that. That wasn't the only new piece of gear we got. We got... I got a new iPhone 11. We got microphones to try and make our videos better. So hopefully, hopefully this video sounds better. This one better. sounds good because we're using our new mic. I got a new drone. I got the uh, DJI Mavic Air 2. I'm absolutely loving that. I even got a new uh, iPhone SE second generation. So. And an iWatch. Wow, Mr. Watch. Make Fun of Technology over here. Hey, you know, we didn't pay rent for a while. There was no traveling. There were no concerts. So, yeah, we got to upgrade our gear. That definitely didn't suck. Definitely didn't suck. So after Umphreys at the drive-in, we flew out to Denver for a fiercely Colorado road trip. Yep, we met up with our friend Dan Shando and hopped in the car for a road trip. We went to see the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Mm -hmm. Then we went to see the Great Sand Dunes. We also went to a ghost town, St. Elmo Ghost Town, and we saw a castle. We soaked in hot springs, we played disc golf, we hit some breweries. Um, we stayed in some awesome Airbnbs because it was too cold to camp. We saw snow in September. That yeah. was crazy. That's enough snow for us. We're out. No more snow for us. Hence the reason we dubbed that trip Fiercely Colorado. It was Fiercely Colorado, and it was great. You know, it was a lot of fun. Crossed some more national parks off our list and reminded us why Colorado's one of our favorite states. Yep. Uh, the next thing on our list is another glamping trip. This time mm. we stayed in a wooden teepee about an hour outside of Rocky Mountain National Park. Yeah, it was super cool. We booked it last minute. Um, it was during the middle of the week, so we got lucky. Found the teepee. We actually rented a Mini, which turned out to be a pretty sweet car. I wasn't stoked at first, but Mini Coopers are really fun to drive. It was it was great. We only spent a couple days in the park, and there was this timed entry, so we didn't have a whole lot of time, but we still did about 12 miles of hiking in, within a couple days and saw some absolutely insane scenery there. Yeah, we managed to hike all the way to Lock Lake with a 3 p.m. entry time. So yeah, I'd say bad. that's pretty good. We got a full video on that if you want to check it out um, for more details. But, you know, we love Colorado. We love the U.S. We had to come back to Mexico before it got too cold. Yeah, as much as we love the States, we don't love to be cold. So we hopped on a flight and headed back here to our beloved Puerto Vallarta. And we've been staying in a place in the uh, Cinco de Diciembre neighborhood, which you may have seen in our Nomad Pads video. And we love that place. It's great. It's amazing. But we were not able to stay there through the winter, so we had to do a little house hunting. Yeah, we had to do an actual apartment hunt. And then we signed a contract, something that we haven't done in a couple of years. It's a little freaky, but you know, it's only for six months. It's only and for six months. It's okay. Here we are in our brand spanking new condo. This place hasn't even been open for a year. Um, it's very nice. It's very nice. But too nice for it's us. It's very modern. The roof has not one, but two swimming pools, a gym, and Wait, a sauna. Infinity pools. Right, yes. Sorry. Not just pools. Not infinity just infinity pool. pools. Right. Um, and then this apartment itself is amazing. We have a balcony right here where we can see the ocean and the mountains. I'd say we leveled up a bit. Yeah, and we're going to be spending the winter here, um, so we're pretty stoked about that. Usually we travel during the winter, but this is not a bad backup. Another thing on our list is sustained growth of our blog. Um, Mostly that... because of her. I'm a slacker. <laughs> well, you helped. But this YouTube channel is a part of that blog. Mm -hmm. and. It was really exciting to watch our little hobby blog grow into an actual business and earn an income this year. So for all of you who have watched our videos, read our blog posts, thank you. This is because of you and your willingness to follow our long, strange trip. Yeah, 2020 was not a great year for travel bloggers, but because we focus a lot on teaching English online, digital nomad life, and uh, you know stuff like that, we had a pretty good year. The uh, blog's doing all right, our little... A little blog that could is chugging along and um, yeah, it's really because of Rachel's hard work. So everybody clap for her. 
Clap for Sasha. <laughs> you helped too. <laughs> We're going to toss in a little bonus thing that didn't suck. Uh, speaking of Puerto Vallarta, we finally visited the Marietta's Islands and the famous Hidden Beach. Yes, that was an amazing experience. We went on a Sunday and we were actually the first people on the Hidden Beach. This Hidden Beach has been so popular the last couple of years, they've even had to limit the amount of people that can go yeah. there day to day. And we were actually the first to arrive and we had the entire place to ourselves for a solid 10 minutes. Yeah, that was an awesome experience. I think we've technically given you 21 things that didn't suck about 2020, but hey, here we are in 2021, so why not add that extra one on there? I guess when we go over all that, it really wasn't such a bad year for us. I know a lot of people had a terrible year and we feel for everyone who did. Uh, we'd just like to sh uh, shine a little bit of positive light on what was a very negative year. And you know, we'd love to hear from you guys. What was something that didn't suck for you about 2020? Even something small, just try to be a little positive. Uh, drop a comment, let us know what was something good from last year for you or what you're looking forward to for this year. Yeah, and if you want to see what we get up to in this year, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a video. And yeah, thanks for watching. We hope you all have a great year. Happy New Year.